If you're a beginner salesperson, you've never jumped on the phone before, you started a new job, you're a graduate, and you're thinking, where do I start? Here's my top tips to get you started. A wise man once said, no one ever died from cold calling. How true that is. But for some reason, when we're about to jump on that phone and speak to busy strangers, the feeling of rejection or potential rejection overcomes us and the feeling that we're gonna die, that this is something we could never do, quickly overcomes us. But I'll remind you, no one ever died from cold calling. And if you think your commission, the meeting, whatever your goal is, is on the other end of a few no's on the phone, guaranteed you'd push through. It's believed that you have seven seconds to make a first impression, seven seconds. And if you think every cold call probably starts the same way, it puts the pressure on. You've got seven seconds to stand out, seven seconds to sound different, to say something different. So before you jump in, when you're looking at your script or you're thinking of the things to say, ask yourself, is everyone saying this? And if everyone is, am I gonna get the same response that everyone else gets? So I'd advise using a pattern interrupt to open all your calls. And a pattern interrupt, put simply, is just something that breaks the traditional pattern. Something that causes the brain to kick into overdrive and say, I don't recognize this, this is a different approach. So you're sat up in your chair and suddenly you're paying attention. And that could sound, well, I'll give you a few examples. John, I'll be completely upfront. This is actually a sales call, so I don't know if you wanna hang up now or let me have 30 seconds. John, I'll be honest, I am a salesperson, so I don't know if you hate salespeople and you need to have me track down and shot, or if you wanna give me 30 seconds before deciding. John, if I said I was calling to try and sell you something, would you say I've set myself out with the hardest job of all, or would you give me 30 seconds and then decide? John, I'll be very upfront. We don't know each other. This is actually a complete cold call. So you can either hang up or give me 30 seconds, see if it's relevant and decide if we keep talking. Completely up to you. John, a uh, bit of a weird one. I was hoping you could help me. Um, you're actually on a list of dream companies that we've always wanted to work with. I'll be honest, I don't even know if it's gonna be relevant for you, but I thought if you let me sum it up in 30 seconds, you can decide if I'm barking up the wrong tree or not. Does that sound fair? That from there, you've got their attention. They've said, come on, what is it that you're selling? Depends what it's about. Go on, you can have your 30 seconds. Whatever the response is, you need to remember that the person on the other end of the phone has the same favorite subject as everyone else that you're gonna to speak to. Do you know what that is? It's themselves. It's not football or the weather or whatever else you were thinking. It's themselves. And because it's themselves, what we need to do is outline a script or a value proposition or a set of problems that exist in their world. I guarantee you, if you start off that call talking about who you are, talking about your awards, talking about your accreditations, you're not gonna get very far. So come up with a script that's all about the person that you're ringing. Now, the next component of the call is whatever you've said, your, your problems, your value proposition, the thing that's all about that prospect, at this point, they'll have either said, you know what, that doesn't sound like it applies to me, or they've said, yeah, some of that applies. They've opened the door a little bit, there's a creak, there's a almost a way inside. It's then up to us to continue that process. And the way I think about it is, we wanna ask a series of questions like a therapist would. So when you sit down with a therapist and you say, here's my problem, they don't jump up and down and say, oh, I know the solution, I can help you, I can help you. They sit back and they say, that's interesting. When was the first time that you noticed this? What have you done to fix it? How long have you felt like you needed to change? Why haven't you changed so far? And if you think about questioning the style that a therapist would, they're leading you to a very similar conclusion that you should be leading your prospects to as a salesperson. It's not forcing change or persuading someone to change, it's allowing room for the person you're speaking to to slowly but surely either persuade themselves that they want to do something or they want to do nothing, arriving at yes or no. And now we've hit the point in the call where the person's been open and shared with you, there's some empathy being built, there's a lot of listening that's gone on and hopefully a little bit challenging as well around why haven't you fixed anything so far? And in doing this, what you create is a template to either change, 
or not to change, but that's built on emotion, that's built on thinking deeply about the subject or the problem that you solve, and the person they're around having to think deeply about it and then come up with a conclusion themselves that they either want to change or they don't want to change. And at that point, it's very, very important that we don't try and kick the door down and steal the wallet and be like every other salesperson in the world. And the issue with most salespeople is around expectations. You hear a lot of salespeople talk about how they definitely can help. Oh, we've helped with that before. The reality is we don't really know at this point. And those expectations should feel like that. So it's very important at this stage to talk about how you might be able to help. You've heard things like this before. You have helped in the past. I obviously don't know you well enough yet to definitely be able to help you. But let's imagine I could help. Would there be any reason not to put some time in the diary and explore that a little bit further? It's a lot smoother, a lot less forced, a lot less salesy than saying to someone, I can definitely help you. Let me show you our great solution. And at the end of it, you can tell me what you think and I can talk to you about pricing and discounts and all the usual things that salespeople start doing when they hear about a problem. Now, most salespeople, when they start this process, are so focused on the next question that they're gonna ask or are so scared of the silence that might happen that they're constantly tripping over themselves to get the next word out. But silence is your friend. If you think about the great interviewer, Louis Theroux, if you ever watch any of his documentaries, he asks a huge big picture question around uh, how does that make you feel or how long has this been going on for? One of those big picture questions. When the person's finished talking, he often leaves silence there so that the other person has to fill that. Silence is a great thing because it's space that one party always feels like they have to fill. So if you're worried as a salesperson about, oh, what happens if I run out of things to say? What happens if there's silence? It's actually a good thing because the other person will always fill in that silence on your behalf should you leave it long enough. So don't worry too much about silence. Another tip is how do I coax the conversation along without interrogating someone? So if you think about how it feels to be asked lots and lots of questions, if I was to say to you now, imagine being asked lots and lots of questions, often the emotion or the context that springs to mind isn't one of positivity. You think probably about interrogations. And if you ever watch one of those documentaries where it's a uh, police interrogation type setup, there's often tales of people admitting to crimes they haven't done because they've been interrogated. They'll just say yes to make it stop. So do you think a potential prospect would say yes to you just to make it stop? 100% they would. So what you want to think of is what does it actually feel like to listen to someone? And an example that I usually give is, let's imagine you were a friend called you up and was confiding in you. The language you use would be very, very different than the language you use on your prospects. If I was one of your friends and I called you up and said that my wife's left me, you wouldn't go, great, okay. Tell me more, perfect, okay, that makes sense. You wouldn't use that typical sales patter that people use. So when you're listening to someone, what does it actually feel like to listen to someone? How does it actually sound? How do you make the other person feel like you're listening to them? And let's keep in mind that on the phone, they don't get the real uh, interpersonal connection because body language is such a big component. So you've got to make up for that a little bit. So think about how you would do that. So they're my beginner tips for salespeople that are jumping on the phone. Regardless of what you watch in these videos or similar videos, the real thing here is just getting out of your own way, getting on the phone. It's never gonna be perfect when you first start off, but you need to build the muscle memory, get the calluses, get the scar tissue, realize that you're not gonna die on your first rejection, and just jump in and get it done. And remember, no one ever died from cold calling. <laughs>